I want to start with asking a few questions. So I want to know, just now, at this moment, how many things you are thinking? How many of you are thinking about only one thing? You can keep raising hand. How many of you are thinking of a few things? And how many of you are thinking of many things? Lots of hands. This is not something I want to know. I want to know more if it is the quality thinking that you're doing, the many things. Is it important? Is it urgent? Is it strategic or productive? Having said that, let me request you to show me your pointing finger. And I'll request you to bring this close to your forehead and point this area. Yes, you reached the right place where you're doing all this thinking. This is the place you're doing these many thinking at the same time. And this is where the question, are, are you doing the quality thinking? Where Thomas Alva Edison already said, we are doing 5% thinking, and 10% of your think that you think, and the rest, 85, even rather prefer to die than think. So if I'm mentioning about quality thinking and relate why it's necessary, I can also tell you the reference of a National Science Foundation, which says, in an average, a person have 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. And among this, 95% thinkings are just the repetitive one that you have done already yesterday, and 80% are negative. So you can see that what we are doing, spending our thinking, our cognitive capacity on negative or repetitive thinking. So this is the time to sit on the driving seat and drive your thinking so that you can have your control over your thinking. Imagine if you are given a car every day, but with a limited gas in it, and you are asked to run whole day. Will you be interested to choose all small tasks located in different places of the city, or you'll prefer to pick the most important task to finish at the very beginning of the day? Will you be interested to take the drive when the road is heavy, when the traffic is very high, or you will take some time, rather even starting earlier, to avoid the heavy traffic? Would you be interested to go for a long drive at the end of the day? Because once you have done almost with your all gas, you will not. In reality, we don't. But if we replace the situation instead of the car with our brain, we are doing what you have said. We are picking a lot of small things at the beginning of the day. We are checking the notifications on our social medias. We are checking all these emails at the beginning of the day. We are not giving us enough space to work with a higher speed. We are not having a quick look with the energy that our brain has or not to start with the quality thinking, or strategic thinking which require the quality cognitive capacity. So that is the reason why I feel it is my idea worth sharing to have a control over the speed of your mind, as well as being the brain science leader. And it's important, the reason why, because you're the future leader, you're the next leader, and you'll be leading the world when it is specially called the VUCA world when uncertainty is everywhere, challenges are everywhere, and the new technologies are creating disruption every single second. And you are drawn with the overflow with information. At the same time, if it is so, then you need to be more flexible, you need to be more agile and resilient with doing whatever you are doing, being a leader. So that is the reason why I can say that our economy is moving from being the industrial age 
to information age, now we call it imagination age. By which I mean we are creating the economic value over our creativity or imagination. And once I say the word imagination, I mean using your brain. Not like the spare one that I have in my uh, table. It's your own original brain. And that is why you, being a next leader, need to look after your own brain's well-being as well as your body's well-being. And having said that, so how can I look into that I'll be the brain science leader, I'll, I'll have a proper control over my speed of our mind? How can we be the person? Okay, to answer to that, let me share a few uh, uh, background, because the researchers, the, especially the neuroscience scientists, have found using the fMRI or EEG technologies, they saw on the pictures or images of the brain with the red and blue blockages on it, which measures the what part of our brain is having the more blood flow and which part of our brain is having less, which can identify this is the situation where we need more blood in particular part of our brain, and we have to learn how to do it. On the other side, the electroencephalogram or EEG shows the wave of our brain which express what is the state of our brain that has to be in practice to generate some specific task. Say, for example, in creative task, we need to keep our brain in a certain state. So moving forward, to understand more deeply, I need to tell specifically about three major parts of our brain. Number one is our prefrontal cortex. Number two is the limbic system, and number three is the amygdala. The prefrontal cortex, or PFC in short, is the place where you point it at the beginning, which is behind your forehead. The prefrontal cortex is also known as the thinking brain, is also known as the executive brain, because this is the part the leaders are using mostly. How? Because they are doing the decision-making, calculating, comparing, recalling from the memory, and also inhibiting by using this part. But in physically, if we show that prefrontal cortex is in here, and it is only the 4% of your brain, but this 4% takes 80% of total brain's energy. And the energy by which I mean the brain's blood's two main ingredients which is the glucose and oxygen. So the bottom line, prefrontal cortex can work properly if you ensure the amount of blood with enough amount of oxygen and glucose in it. Otherwise, the prefrontal cortex will not be able to work properly. So the trick, the learning, we have to take care of our prefrontal cortex. But we also have other two parts called limbic system and amygdala. Limbic system is a part which is responsible for the feelings. And within limbic system, there's a small, tiny part called amygdala. And amygdala is responsible for three Fs, including fight, flight, and freeze. And amygdala is inversely related to our prefrontal cortex. That means once we got the amygdala arousal, we get less active prefrontal cortex. So the, so the clue is we need to minimize the amygdala hijacking over the prefrontal cortex. Another interesting finding about the brain, which says our brain scans the environment five times a second, which means it scans the environment to check if it is the environment for or, or against to me. If it is for, then it works toward, or if it is against, then it works against the situ situation. Which means if we are finding the situation is more in your state, we are more connected. We are having more insight. Our focus is more broadened, and we get the inner, in, inner uh, ideas more quickly with more connection. And at the same time, if we put our 
prefrontal cortex in a reward state, that is the only time it's more active, more efficient to think more clearly, which means the quality thinking. And the, one of the research also says that if we do not do the, uh, the balance of the reward and uh, threat, then we can lose the 50% of our mental productivity. So the trick is we have to take care of our prefrontal cortex. We have to understand this is the main part which is responsible for all the decision making, calculating, analyzing, inhibiting, recalling all these important tasks. And that's the reason why you have to take care of prefrontal cortex. But as a leader, we are not always dependent on prefrontal cortex to take our all decision. Sometimes we also focus on our aha moment or inside, which is our subconscious part of our brain. But we cannot get it once our prefrontal cortex is activated and noisy with a lot of thinking. So what we need to do, we have to quieten our brain so that we allow our the quiet and neural connection to listen to it so that we can generate that insightful moment in our day-to-day -day activities to get some aha moments, get some creative ideas or strategic ideas. And, and we can, by that, we can tap into the bottom size of the iceberg model. So if we are doing the prefrontal cortex, which is more linear, we can also tap into the subconscious part by not getting into the prefrontal cortex, rather getting into the aha or the subconscious brain by doing this. And this is where we need to start doing unlearning the practice of the way we are doing our leadership performance. First of all, we need to do some priority of our tasks. What are more, it's not only about the important and urgent, it's also about being productive, being strategic, and being uh, creative. So we need to put those work at the, uh, at the first part of the morning, or at the first two hours in the morning, more specifically, so that we can think more quality way. And at the same time, very importantly, we have to remove the multitasking. Because multitasking kills your IQ. And if you can couple with a few more nights of not sleeping overnight, then it will kill all over. And the most interestingly, it says if you're interrupted for a day-to-day -day work, uh, it will take 63 seconds for you to bring back to the same thought. And if you check, five you know every five minutes an email then it will come together that in a week you're losing 8.5 hours and it also says if you're doing the deep thinking the strategic thinking or co the uh, uh, quality thinking then it will take like around 25 minutes for you to get back to the deep thinking so you understand how many minutes we are actually losing over the time, but just by doing the multitasking, which is nothing but switching from one part of our brain to another part of our brain. And we have to take some time. So we have to take some time off to get some oxygen into our brain through some deep breathing. And it also says that if you're doing the 10 minute deep breathing three times a week, then we are adding one more week mental productivity to your capacity cognitive capacity. We need to be having some brain break during the day. Doesn't mean that you have to check the email or having a chat or critic, doing some critic chat about a person. It's only doing nothing. Having a brain break is very important and we have to allow ourselves to slow us down at some point in an in interval throughout the day. So I want to finish with uh, sharing one of the story about my son who is uh, now 11. So one afternoon, I was uh, cooking in the evening. So I was almost done with all of my cooking. And I was just left with veggies. I was cutting my veggies on my kitchen with my cutter board. And he suddenly came in and asked mom, can I help you? And I thought he might be feeling hungry. That's the reason why he wants to help me to understand how much time is left for having put uh, together. So I thought, why don't I start engaging him with something? So I asked, would you mind helping me with the carrots? So he smiled and said, sure, I, I can do this. So he took the carrots from me and took the pillar as well. And he peeled the carrot. I was waiting. Then he, he is supposed to come to me, and I'm supposed to cut the carrot for making the dinner. 
But he didn't come to me. He straight went to the oven and put those carrot into the oven, heat it up for two minutes, then bring it back to me and said, Mom, now you can cut this and it must be much easier for you. So I thought after, <laughs> then what actually happened here? I asked him a question which didn't declare anything to do. I said, can you help me with the carrots? So he was getting enough space of his own thinking, own creative way of discovering how can he help me in a more better way. So he heated up and made, made it softer for me so that I could cut it very nicely. So if we allow our people by asking the right question, not pushing, not pressurizing, not making it faster, not pushing the productivity harder, rather letting them do by themselves, asking a right question, not saying them what to do. And if we can enable ourselves having a practice of enough spaces, not pressing the accelerator, even you are waiting in the high traffic jam. Even if we plan over the day the what will be the, my most important task at the beginning of the day to start with, so that I can use my most quality brain at the beginning of the day with my cognitive resources, how beautiful it will be. And that is the reason why I want you to be the brain science leader who can have a control over the speed of your brain as well as others. Thank you.